Welcome to another coronavirus free video from GK Tech. This time we're going to be tackling our stainless steel braided Teflon ABS delete kit. It comes in both left hand drive and right hand drive and it comes in a bag. Rip the top off of this bag and this is what you get. You get two banjo bolts with copper crush washers, the M10 by one T piece which suits the line ends that are also M10 by one, the P clips which are used to secure the line to the chassis, and moving right along to the lines themselves. This is the one that goes from the master cylinder to the rear brake line port on the chassis rail. I'll show that here in a bit so don't freak out. This line goes from the master cylinder to the T, then the other short line goes from the T piece to the wheel well. Now finally the long line. This one goes from the T piece to the other wheel well. This line can either go across the subframe or the firewall. It's your choice. Now look at this engine bay. More specifically, look at this ugly cheese block that is the ABS unit. It's no good for drifting and it's ugly. Since we all know drifting is a fashion show, let's clean it up and simplify, huh? To get started, remove the brake reservoir cap and filter, then suck out all the brake fluid by method of choice. In this case, Zach just inhaled it. Not recommended. Once the fluid is out, put the cap and filter back on, then loosen these two hard lines and pop them out of the way. Then go underneath the car and loosen the hard line that goes to this block on the chassis rail and loosen and pop that out. Now head over to the driver's side front hard line and pop that out, then the passenger side front and pop that out as well. It's time to head over to the Spaghetti Square ABS Monster and loosen and remove this hard line, pulling the entire thing out as shown. Now loosen the ABS unit bolts, of which there are two. Pop the lines off the firewall, and then lift the entire ABS Spaghetti Monster out of the engine bay. Now remove the hard line bracket bolts and brackets themselves from the firewall. Then move on to removing the ABS bracket bolts by removing the ones in the engine bay, then heading down under and removing the bracket bolt from the chassis there. Now head to the wheel well and remove the bracket nuts as shown here. Now as Zach is demonstrating, you can now gingerly remove this bracket. And look how much better that engine bay looks. You still won't impress your friends, but hey, you tried. Laying the series of tubes out on a bench, this is what the system would look like so you have a basic idea. The rear port of the master cylinder controls the front brake lines, hence the T-piece. Now the front port of the master cylinder controls the rear brake lines, which already have a T back there, and that's why there's only one line. Now let's start with the front port, aka the rear brakes. Thanks for that one, Nissan. Front for front, rear for rear would have only made sense. Anyway, install the brake line as shown using the banjo bolt and crush washers on each side of it. Don't tighten this all the way down yet. Now drop the line down to the block on the frame rail and thread her in and tighten it down. Since this is the swivel fitting, you want to do this one first. Moving on to the rear port which controls the front brakes, drop the front line down and then install the banjo and crush washers. But again, do not tighten this down all the way. Now head down under again to install the T-piece to the bottom. You can bolt this to a little bracket we found down there which fits perfect. Now thread the line into the T-piece as shown and tighten down. Now grab that hard line we removed earlier and pull off the rubber grommet. We're going to be installing this onto the GK Tech line as shown. This is the line that goes from the T-piece to the wheel well. Pop that through and thread the line to the fitting then tighten her down. Pop the grommet all the way in, then thread the line into the T-piece. Now finally, feed the long line through and thread that into the T-piece and tighten it down as well, checking to make sure you tighten the other ones while you're down there. Now we did these first, then the banjo bolts as shown, so we ensure that there's no kinks in any of the lines. Once the top banjo bolts are tight, we can run the long line. And as I mentioned earlier, you can go across the firewall as we're doing here, or you can go across the subframe as well. It's your choice. Run the line across the firewall and down to the other wheel well. Then pop the fitting through, thread, and tighten down. Once it's all tightened down, continue running and tucking the line until it's exactly how you want it. When you like where it is, use the supplied P-clips and some self-tappers to tap those suckers home. The more secure the line is, the less flex. The less flex, the better braking you'll have. We recommend using all the supplied clips for maximum anti-flex. Finally, remove the cap, fill the reservoir with fluid, bleed the system well, install the cap and filter, and that's it. You've removed some ugliness from your engine bay, and your friends can now make fun of you for not having AC. These guys are doing the same things in every clip we show, so follow them on YouTube. And if you can install this, have a pro do it, or reach out with any questions you may have. This has been Officer Dan, Johnny Caps, and Break Long Zach with another GK Tech How-To. See you next time. Peace.